This is the preparation of aspirin from the General Chemistry Lab manual. So this is a pretty cool lab because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make something. So chemists spend a lot of time, a lot of chemists spend their careers basically making things. And so this is one of the key, professional uh, synthesis is one of the key professional uh, um, uh, occupations that, that chemists have. And so we're going to make something that you know we have uh, all the time, that's aspirin. Uh, from uh, salicylic acid. So the reaction here is drawn. Now we use a slightly different nomenclature or uh, drawing procedure in uh, this is what we call organic chemistry. So we don't really have to worry about that. The formula is there on the bottom. You can track that. So what you're doing is basically adding a um, two oxygens, uh, two carbons, and a uh, or two, well sorry, one oxygen, two carbons, and three hydrogens to uh, salicylic acid, which can be isolated from uh, willow bark and things like that. So so the reaction is shown. It is the salicylic acid, which is this compound on the left, and then it has um, you react it with this compound called acetic anhydride, so that's the, the C4H6O3 molecule, and then you add a little bit of catalyst, which is a uh, phosphoric acid, um, and you heat it, and you get this reaction where you uh, get aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid, um, as well as acetic acid. So that's uh, the main component of vinegar. So, um, so you'll run the reaction, you'll actually do the workup and isolate the solid by vacuum filtration. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. Um, and then um, we're going to ask you to do three things. And we're going to try to do this lab in lab. We're going to have it so there's no lab report due. Basically, you'll turn everything in lab. We're going to determine percent yield. We're going to determine the solubility of aspirin in various kinds of solvents. And we're also going to have a quick purity check where we can check for the amount of um, sal salicylic acid left using a spectrophotometer. Okay, so, um, and we'll talk about how to do each one of these here at the end. So this one covers a lot of different objectives. So first you're going to be doing a chemical reaction. So I think that's the main thing in performing it. But you're also going to be doing a lot of things we've done before. So we're going to use Beer's Law. So that's going to be a concentration-based calculation. We're going to use the UV spectrometer. We're going to determine mass. We're going to do filtration. So there's a lot of different things this kind of culmination of all the things that we've done uh, thus far in, in lab. Now lab manual is pretty thorough, but we're going to make a few changes. One is that we're not doing the melting temperature. That is a standard technique uh, tech, uh, from an equipment standpoint. We have all the equipment, but it's going to be really kind of painful to get it all moved into the Gen Chem lab. So we're going to ignore melting temperature. That will be a routine test that you do if you go on in the chemistry uh, curriculum and take organic chemistry. That's our major, one of our major uh, tests. So we're also going to do a solubility test. I think they had six solvents. We're only going to use four, hexane, ethyl acetate, acetone, and water uh, to determine the solubility of it. And then finally for the uh, impurity, um, we're going to see if we have enough time. I think we will, but we'll give you the calibration equation, um, the standard curve basically for the for the, the amount of salicylic acid you have. So you'll just have to calculate it based on the absorbance that you determine. So we are going to work in pairs. Um, not everybody will have a spectrophotometer. Um, I will say this is uh, potentially a little bit, uh, it's going to make some acetic acid, which uh, smells a little vinegary. Um, it'll smell a little bit like a salad dressing in there. So we'll have the hoods on, we'll keep the doors closed. Um, and I, I just advise wearing gloves. Some of these things can be, I mean, aspirin obviously is safe, but um, the acetic acid can be an irritant, so can the phosphoric acid. I think, you know, in terms of the pure safety things, these are some uh, potentially some corrosive uh, liquids. So you want to be careful. You want to wear gloves. Um, you want, don't want to get too close to the vapors. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit corrosive. And also, I think it goes without saying, I didn't put on here, you know, you cannot ingest this aspirin. So if you have a headache, this is not something, you know, those are made under very safe conditions uh, with high regulation on purity. Uh, and yours will not be. So um, I would highly, it would be a very, very bad idea to try to ingest any of this stuff uh, in any way, shape, or form. So the protocol basically works exactly the same way it's in the manual. So you're going to weigh out some salicylic acid uh, and, um, and get a, a mass for that. You then uh, strap some gloves on, measure out your acetic anhydride, and, and add that to the mix. And then you'll add some phosphoric acid. So the phosphoric acid amount is not as critical. You just have to add a few. I think it's a, a number of drops. 
uh, into the mixture and you'll be good to go. I think it's like five drops because it's a catalyst so it doesn't really matter how much we add. So then the hardest part will be trying to kind of manipulate your clamps. So you'll want to get it into some hot water. Hopefully you'll have the water heated beforehand um, so you can lower it in there. And then you'll let it cook for however long. I forget how long it says to cook in the lab manual. And then you'll add some water. Okay, and the water uh, will get rid of the excess uh, acetic anhydride. This will be the step that probably generates a good bit of the, uh, the stinky uh, part. So then uh, at this point you can take it out. Uh, the reaction should be complete. And you should be able to let it uh, cool. You're also going to add a good bit, much, uh, good bit more water um, to cause the uh, stuff to precipitate out of solution. Again, I'm just following the lab manual here. You can put it on ice at this point to cool it down. That'll get more solid coming out. And, uh, and so then you can uh, let it sit there, I don't know, I think it's like five minutes uh, to get a good uh, white solid uh, mass. At this point, you'll do vacuum filtration, which we have done previously. So we'll have, again, the vacuum pump set up with the stopcocks, the filter paper, and you'll kind of dump it off. You're going to need some extra water to help uh, um, rinse off the rest of that solid. Um, we'll have little squirt bottles there. You might be able to use your spatula and you'll get it all transferred. Okay, at that point, you can just let it uh, dry on the pump. Let it suck for, I don't know, maybe five minutes or so. Um, and, um, and then, you know, maybe rinse it with a little bit more water. We'll try to get some ice water so it makes it easier. But at that point, um, let it dry. It'll dry relatively quickly. And so then you can dump the solid out uh, into a, a pre-weighed dish so that'll allow you to get the mass, okay? And so it'll still be a little wet, so you're probably gonna overestimate your mass a little bit, but it's enough that we can live with it. Ideally, we'd let it sit for a week and dry, and then we could do it, but you know, the problem is, is that uh, it's kind of pain, it'll be hard to do, especially uh, as late in the lab season as this is. So just measure the mass. If you want, you can pre-weigh the filter paper. Normally, I just scrape, the, scrape it off the filter paper, I would wear gloves. I'm not wearing gloves. That's sort of a bad idea. So, Okay, so percent yield is a pretty standard uh, approach in organic chemistry or in, in any chemistry we're making something. And the idea is to determine the limiting reagent. So you know it's not phosphoric acid. That's a catalyst. So you need to figure out if it's either acetic anhydride or um, the salicylic acid. The density of acetic anhydride is 1.0 grams per But you can do that before you come in. And then you can determine the theoretical yield if all of your limiting reactant was converted to product. Okay, so the theoretical yield, so the stoichiometry, you know, one molecule of salicylic acid gets converted to aspirin, one molecule of acetic anhydride gets converted to aspirin, so you should be able to figure out the limiting reactant, and then figure out how many grams of aspirin you would get if all of the limiting reactant was converted to product. So that's just a simple stoichiometry problem. And so then percent yield is just 100 times the actual yield that you may divided by the theoretical yield. Now, if you have a lot of water there, your actual yield could, in theory, be more than 100%. I mean, it's not going, you know, in reality, it's not 100%. It's just the fact that your impure water impurity has bumped it over 100. But my guess is, is that our yields will be a decent. This gets pretty dry, so I think it's not going to be too hard. So I think you can do this, you know, once you start, once you get the mass, you should be able to calculate this in lab. Okay, so the second test is the solubility test. Now, remember, when we talk about things dissolving, we go with the like dissolves like. And so we have four solvents, and here the dielectric constant is listed. Um, so low dielectric constant means it's relatively non, it's nonpolar. Highly polar is that. And so you can see we've got a sampling of these. And so the question is, is where does aspirin fall on this range? And so you're just going to, you know, get some solvent into these test tubes, put just in a little scoop, and see if it dissolves. Okay, and so, and depending on which dissolves, then you can make a judgment call about what you would consider aspirin to be like. Is it polar, nonpolar, is it highly polar? Okay, and you should be able to sort of see where on the range it's soluble. And um, it's kind of an interesting question with drugs because what you find with drugs is that um, a lot of times um, potency of a drug like aspirin um, increases if you make it more nonpolar. But the problem is, is that the thing still has to be soluble enough in water to dissolve in your stomach and get into your bloodstream. And so drugs often are very much riding this balance. And so you'll be able to see from the study with, with your four solvents where aspirin lays on this, uh, lies on this scale, this continuum of polarity.
So when you're done with the, the solubility test, just dump all the solvents into a beaker and we'll put that in hazardous organic waste. Uh, there'll be a jug there and I can collect it for you. So the last test is this iron nitrate test. And what it reacts with, it'll react with uh, the starting material, the salicylic acid, but not aspirin. And it forms a one-to-one -one complex with the salicylate and it gives a nice blue color, purplish color. Um, and the molar, the extinction coefficient that for this is 950 at 525 nanometers. So what you can do then is you'll make a solution up of 0.1 grams roughly, and you'll need the exact mass. You'll, you'll add the solution of all the things it added, and then you'll measure the absorbance of 525, and then you can use Beer's Law, right, where absorbance is equals the extinction coefficient times the concentration to determine the concentration of cell silic acid in solution That'll then allow you to back calculate if you know the volume of the solution and you know the mass, and then you'll be able to figure out uh, how much salicylic acid you had in that original sample that you weighed out, which then will allow you to get a percent salicylic by mass. So that's, it should be in the, you know, 1% to maybe 4 or 5% range. Okay, so, so we're not going to do a standard curve. You can just use the extinction coefficient, the 950, We'll assume that it goes to the origin. We'll assume that the path length is one centimeter. And so it should be relatively easy for you to calculate. So the lab manual tells you how much you need to, how, how you make up that solution. I think it's like uh, 0.1 grams of uh, salicylic acid, uh, like five mils of, acet of uh, ethanol. And then it's, uh, I think you add a bunch of uh, like water and like five mils of the iron nitrate solution. So you add those four things together, uh, it's pretty straightforward, and then you just take some of that out and, and do the 